Welcome to Lost in English Translation. <laughs> you know, I've lived in America for almost 20 years and I'm beginning to think that English phrases and idioms have conspired against me. I mean, just about a week ago, I was rehearsing something on the guitar that I'm hoping to perform here one day, my song, and I, thank you. I told my husband, you know, it's hard to make a good music, and he said, that's okay, Helen, you have a knack for it. And I said, you know, but in this case, it's not knack, it's really more like ears. I mean, why is it always you have a knack for it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, when I got out of the plane and um, my legs got cramped, and I said, oh, I have jet legs, you know? Um, Little things like that. Um, and um, about a couple months ago, my son asked me to buy him. It's kind of like a toy. They're like little balls that grow in water. You know, and they're really cool, though. They're called Orbeez. I like O-R-B-E-E-Z, something like that. So I went to Walmart and couldn't find them, so I had to ask a guy that works there for him. And I'm thinking, how did he say, what are they called? O-R something, O R. And before I knew it, I'm asking the guy at Walmart, where do you have orgies? <laughs> mm. I mean, he heard me, yeah, so. Um, you know, it's funny, sometimes people actually decide, they know you don't know what you're saying, and they decide to kind of make a prank on you, so. This guy from Canada, an immigrant, he got a letter from his insurance company, um, something about his car, and at the bottom of the letter it signed, yours truly. So he calls the insurance company and says, um, hello, can I talk to Mr. Truly? And, you know, they, uh, they knew that, and they were like, oh yeah, just hold on just a second. And so one guy picks up the phone, yes, this is Mr. Truly. You know, at the bottom, truly, yours. Um, and, uh, I don't know, sometimes it's the little things that get me. For instance, there was a couple walking in the park with a real nice dog, and I was like, oh, how cute. What brand of dog is it? You know. <laughs> and um, w back when I was studying at UTD, when I was a student, I was sitting with this guy in the restaurant, and I said, oh, what are you doing this weekend? He says, oh, I'm going to bachelor's party. I'm like, Oh, cool, when I graduate from UTD, I'll have one also. Yeah. You know, sometimes people ask me, because I have a big collection, they say, Helen, well, what is your like most embarrassing story that you've ever run into? And I say, well, if it's the most embarrassing, I don't want to tell them, you know. <laughs> but anyway, um, but you guys have to promise me one thing, that you're not going to go to Russia just because of this big misunderstanding. Okay. Um, my first year in the country, people were often, oh, you're from Russia, so, you know, what do they do there? What do they eat? And lots of questions. And this guy, um, I was sitting in the car with him, and he said, oh, you're from Russia, so tell me, what do they wear in Russia? And what I was trying to tell him that until 1970s, Russian women wore, like, skirts and dresses, and pants were really more for men. And I think the problem is when two words are very similar and it's your own language, you really know exactly what you're saying, you know? When it's a foreign language, two similar words are so easy to mix up, you know? So he said, oh, so tell me, what do they wear in Russian? And I said, well, until 1970s, Russian women used not to wear panties. He was like, really? You know, and I think what really helped is I was pointing at my pants. He said, do you mean pants or panties? And I was like, um, is that not the same thing? I mean, you know, things. <laughs> yeah, th but just don't go to Russia because it's not true, okay? You guys know that, right? <laughs> and um, Sometimes it's the things that I see or hear on TV. I think um, they were talking about Sarah Palin's daughter, that she may be um, homophobic. 
and I asked my husband, <laughs> he really has fun with me, I asked, what is homophobic? Is that like afraid to stay home? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I have to tell you that one of the hardest things when it's a foreign language are songs, because when they're singing, you really cannot hear it so well, and you kind of, well, whatever comes across. You know, there is that song, I've heard it so many times, um, it's about love, and the choir goes, is it in the way he looks, in the way he acts, and then the singer says, no, that's not where it is, it's in his kiss, that's where it is. You know that song, it's in his kiss, that's where it is. So I heard that song many times, and then one time I asked my husband, I said, why is this song so materialistic? He said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, I don't know if they're talking about keys from the car or from the house, but why should love be in his keys, you know? <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, and. Okay, this is not very good. Um, <laughs> okay, so I was, last year I was getting emails from someone whose name was BJ. Now, I have to tell you that names are very tricky. I mean, even if you speak the language, names are so abstract. Uh, just by the sound of it, BJ, I didn't know if I'm talking to a man or a woman, and it kind of, I just wanted to, know, to have a face, you know, a picture with the name. So I figured, well, I'm just gonna, you know, check that on internet one, t one day. And <laughs> um, yeah, I was sitting at the Plano School Seminar, <laughs> and there were all these mothers sitting next to me, and at some point the seminar got real boring, and I was like, okay. So I got out my Blackberry and started internet, and I said, BJ, a man or a woman? I don't think I have to tell you what search came up. <laughs> it's like, what? You know, and I mean, there were these mothers sitting next to me, and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, it's the magic of internet, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I hope one day English language will stop trying to get me. But for now, it just makes for more funny stories. 